Hello, welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and gas that's been ionized the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. And I'm Jordan D. White from the future. Ooh. It's hmm. totally true. Wow. Too bad it happened a long future. time ago for me. Right. Oh, that's and true. And the galaxy that, I don't know. It's far, relatively close. Yeah. Pretty far. You don't have to tell me any details. I know you can't, don't want to pollute the timeline. Are things better in the future? Uh, They're just different, man. It's just different. Some yeah, things are better, true. some things are worse, man. Yeah. Mm. Deep. Yeah. Wow. Star Wars minute. That's it. <laughs> We're done. No, uh, uh, well, thanks for, thanks for coming back again, Jordan. To talk of course. To us, uh, finishing out the week, talking about minute 70, 70, um, of, uh, Solo, a Star Wars <laughs> movie, story, <laughs> party. What am I thinking? It's Solo, a Star Wars story, but we're saying it's Star Wars party. Um, minute 70 starts with L3, um, telling us about the Maelstrom, and it ends with L3 telling us it works. Uh, now, I like that they're laying the groundwork that there are actually creatures that live in these clouds. So, also, cause... I was disappointed because they said that she called them possibly vacuum breathing creatures. Two things about that. First one being, there goes my theory that there's oh yeah, only less than one episode, one minute. Galaxy. Like that, this is <laughs> devastating. Like I mm, thought I had yeah. perfect scientific proof. And second of all, what does vacuum breathing mean? How Maybe... can you breathe nothing? Maybe she is referring to the fact that these creatures breathe by sucking in air. <laughs> That's what everybody does. Right. She's well, a robot. She's a robot. Right. <laughs> so she calls us all vacuum breathers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People you vacuum breathers. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe they just breathe right. like they breathe one way, and then it is exhale like it just goes like they don't inhale and exhale. They, they just, just are inhale. constantly. <gasps> And it's coming out somewhere else at the same time. <laughs> right. And then once they st they die because they suffocate because they're just holding their breath their whole life. So right. <laughs> terrible fate. Um, oh, no. Yes. Vacuum breathing creatures. Well, we've seen creatures in Star Wars that apparently can like the giant worm in uh, in Empire. They survive. They survive in a vacuum, except I'm saying not a vacuum. Yeah. Except that's true. Now I'm, turns right. I'm wrong. So, yeah. Well, um, you may be right. I may be crazy. It's true. Big shot. Uh, so Kira and L3 have their heart-to-heart uh, -heart conversation here. But first right. it starts off, they're talking about the... I like the fact that they're talking about the icebergs and stuff because it just barely puts this... This movie passes the Bechdel test in which oh, two female characters discuss something other than the male character. Mm -hmm. So they talk about icebergs for a second and then immediately start talking Car about the main character. So... Carbon still got it. Still counts. We're putting it in the books. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. I like it. Mm -hmm. So, and and they also talk about the thing I was alluding to earlier that uh, she's got a brand on right. her, yeah, which uh, kind of marks her as part of the Crimson Dawn forever. Mm -hmm. It's right. weird that Han doesn't know that. I, well, he doesn't seem to have underworld experience at this point. He's just learning about that world. Yeah, I guess so. Although he grew He's up just in like, like, that's a cool tattoo you got. What's it mean? Karma or something? <laughs> some, <laughs> and, <laughs> some random Chinese word. I don't know. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it, I'll tell you, this scene, is a, this scene is funky to me. I like it. Mm. I like it. It's fun. Mm. It's but, definitely funky. Uh, well... Kira's the way Kira acts is strange to me because yeah. and, I mean, I don't know. Is, is Kira putting on an act in this entire scene? Because this scene, she seems like a very innocent light person. You know what I mean? Like, a, Oh yeah. Mm, well, yeah. You know what I mean? And she's smiling yeah. and kind of giggling and she does mm -hmm. not seem like a crime boss. And I guess everybody has light moments in their life, but yeah, it's weird. Well, I, I mean, well, at this point, she's not really a boss. She's well, just you know a functionary. I mean. Yes, a, but yeah. a crime person. But also, I I agree because it looks almost <laughs> like she's breaking character. Like it seems almost like the scene was improv that she was just kind of playing along. She's like yes ending. Uh, um, um, L three, you know, just yeah, Phoebe. Uh, 
I'm, I'm getting her confused with the other one. It's Phoebe. From Friends. Exactly. Buffet. There you go. <laughs> um, but it, it almost just se- seems like they're sitting there, like the conversation wasn't scripted or something that it was just kind of like they, they just, she's just kind of sitting there like, oh, oh, really? Like, oh, tell me more about, you know, like feeding her so she can keep going with it. Yeah. yeah. It, it uh, almost and it almost looks like right. Amelia Clark's like breaking at some point. She's like, oh, yeah. Like, I don't know. It's interesting. I agree. Well, one thing uh, I think it's kind of uh, used to be a thing in Star Wars, but I don't I think has long since fallen away is that Luke Skywalker was regarded as something of a weirdo because he treated droids like they were like he would talk to them and 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 so on. But now it seems like pretty much everyone just talks to droids all the time, like because even in Star in Empire like Lando totally, you know, C-3PO tries to make friends with Lando and Lando just walks away from him. And then, right, uh, yeah. Han Solo obviously hates C-3PO. Right. So, uh, it, so I think, I guess starting in the prequel era, yeah, but in the prequel era, we saw Queen Amidala giving a medal to R2-D2. So clearly oh, things yeah. have changed. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, R2-D2. <laughs> yeah. Although technically that was her decoy. And true. I think that was her decoy going, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm going to have my handmaid wash you because <laughs> that's because yeah. you're because you're super cool. Totally. Uh, and, and, um, and actual Padme was going, what is she? I'm going to wash this droid, I guess. <laughs> oh, handmaiden. Toilet's overflowing again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we have um, droids for that? <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, I think Anakin definitely treats R2 well as well. Yeah. Um, Obi Wan K two S O. We have. The, I feel like there's a lot more droid equality. Well, K two is a weird one because yeah, he's a weird one. He, well, he is a weird one, but he's yeah. a strange example because, like, it, you know, he's in it a lot, and he's. But it's also because he's really useful, and he, he's well, been we messed see, with. Yeah, he's you know? been. Yeah, he's been rewired. So, like that, yeah. like at the same time as he's an he's autonomous, but also he's been rewired. So like, yeah. what does that mean? Is that, 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 does that suggest he's a person or not? Because they could just change who he is as a person. Yeah. It really makes you think. So then it's... no, although I guess brain damage does that too, right? Like you, somebody gets in an accident and they're never the same again. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of, uh, the, 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 the star Wars stories seem very, to very casually throw out a lot of really troubling droid, uh, related issues that they just kind of you know, glance past and, uh, well, but, um, I mean, yeah. I guess now that you said that we cannot glance past the troubling droid issues from this minute and we have to talk about it. <laughs> well, so, what? so, so wait, so with, so with Kira, I was almost wondering if she was like, Oh my God, this, this robot is talking to me. Like, is she oh, just kind of like, 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 maybe that's the face, even maybe just amused by it. the fact that she's just like, Oh wow, this robot is telling me, giving me right. love advice. It'd be like your, your microwave. Like when like a four year old talks to you and yeah. you're like, Oh yeah. Like, like, yeah, but you know, like go to outer space and you're like, I Oh, uh-huh. mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm an angel. <clears throat> right. So, um, yes. But the elephant in the room, we find out about the relationship between Londo and uh, L3. Now it's right. not. I mean, I've, she is a mildly unreliable narrator. Like, we don't 100% know how true it is, except it seems pretty true. Like, evidence seems to back it up. I don't know. Well, I also she gets pretty broken up when she dies. Yeah. Yeah. Please, what but, are the questions? Is their relationship as one-sided as she makes it out to be? So, like, is he just obsessed with her in this weird way? <clears throat> no. In which case, they, like, you know, it's, maybe it's not the... He's broken up about it because he's weirdly obsessed and she's just still kind of like standoffish. I think the answer is no because of the because of this minute itself. Like she says, as everybody knows from this famous minute, that he's obsessed with her. And then she says, sometimes I think maybe, but then no. But the no. Right. Except then Kira goes, how would that even work? And her reply is... It works. Well, it doesn't. I mean, according to what you just said, in but general, it does. In general, it would work, but not. Well, so she's, I'm, I'm not saying. I think she's just saying it as a you know, like, oh yeah, it, it it works like overall, not like because she just said the two of them was wouldn't work out with the two of them. So meaning droids do have intercourse with humans, <laughs> but not in this case. I mean, right. we don't know that she, technically. We don't know she meant. Well, it. what else could she mean by saying she could have oh, meant love? We're not right. compatible. And then, but then she says, well, how would that work? 
So like, what because, do you because mean? you're he's going to grow old and die, and you're not. Right. It's like a vampire. Vampires aren't compatible. It's I'm just giving of... that as a possible. It, listen, it's clearly yeah. intercourse, but I, it, maybe it's not. <laughs> is all I'm saying. There's deniability in the way they wrote it. Right. Um, that said, later in the movie, like we get more of it, right? We get uh, not just him being broken up, but we get her like doing saying like, "Oh, you, you got to do the thing later, right?" Isn't there a moment where she says that to him? I need that you to do the thing with my or a little bit earlier because it was it, it was a like one of her you know neck servo motors was displaced or something like that and she was like i need you to do the thing but um, even that that was just like like a repair or like a massage kind of like oh yeah, i just yeah, knocked I that i thought it knocked that one motor back into place right which seemed it's a little into it i mean you're not going to cast phoebe bridgers to and have her do her own dialogue <laughs> and not result in it being like Funny. you know double entendres and stuff right. so uh i it just it's just so many like I'm not sure which implications are the more uh, like troubling. <laughs> you know what I it's mean? definitely messed up. It's definitely messed well, up. Um, I mean, it, not if that if we're if we're on board with her being you know a, a sentient being with her own agency and all that. Yeah. And obviously, you know, Lando. If the two of them are you know consenting sentient beings, then the physicality, you know, the the it, the parts involved don't necessarily matter if they're robotic or not. But then I think I'm more concerned about the, the nature of their relationship. I think he's maybe he's weirdly obsessed with her uh, because it's like a it's like a new thing to conquer. It's just like, oh, I, I want to get with that robot. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think that also you might he be right. owns her. That's the other weird. It's not a thing to conquer. She but has that, to do, you know, like it's oh, it's it's. And that's the thing is that I don't know that I can get on board with the this. She's a sentient being because Again, I feel like the way the plot of the movies, especially this one, play out, it has to be that she's not. Because again, it ends up with her locked on a hard drive, never speaking to another person again, and never getting right. those rights. And it's not treated like, I mean, it's, listen, it's treated like it's tragic that she dies, for sure. Sure. Like, it's not, it's not like a, oh, who cares? It's a droid who's dead. Yeah. Um, but it's not, when they put her in the Falcon, it's not like, that's the thing she would want least in all the world. Like, it's like, no, great, do it. It's useful. Yeah. And right. and then we don't think about it again. And so I feel like the movie then has to be coming down on the side of, it's been fun talking about them like they're people, but they're not. Yeah. And I, and again, that's not great, but it, I that, uh, that must be it, right? <laughs> that must be it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just really tragic. I mean, because it's because listen, I want to think it's cute that she has an accent, and then C three PO says the Falcon has an accent. I want that to be cute and not horrifying, but mm. maybe I guess it's horrifying. <laughs> Do you think she's just like, please, please, get me out of here? <laughs> oh, your computer is very strange. <laughs> yeah. It's just <laughs> <laughs> shrieking at the horror of existence. Um, right. yeah, it's um. It's definitely noteworthy. This man. <laughs> I mean, what other droids? What? Okay, so wh wh have there been other droids? So you mentioned K two S O, but I think he's complicated because, like we yeah. said, he's been reprogrammed. Yeah, you've got R two D two and C three P O. C three P O notably has his memory memory wiped, mm -hmm. and is still the same guy afterwards. Yeah, um, the only time that his personality changes at all is during that one scene in the movie you haven't done yet. Um, so you guys don't know what I'm referring to, of course. Mm -hmm. But yeah, only in that one scene does he change it all. And I think that was a, a funky thing they did. And like, I don't, I feel like he has, he seems to have a self that mm -hmm. isn't. C3PO. Yes. Uh-huh. Right? Oh, I'm saying because he is that person in the prequels mm -hmm. and then they wipe his memory and then he is still that person i mean i guess it could be that's his operating software though that anakin yeah. was like i want a guy who's like super nervous and i'm gonna set it for fussy butler <laughs> yes exactly <Yeah. laughs> he sits and does that and that's just the programming that he has forever and they wipe his memory but they don't wipe his base programming so maybe that's true maybe he well, doesn't be have fair, a personality they say that they want to wipe his memory but we don't see them do it and we don't understand we don't necessarily know that he does well i know that he does because I did a comic about it. Oh, there you go. And, mm. they, and it, I did a comic that involved the uh, the red, what, how he got the red arm, and in that 
it talks right, about course. not remembering like he like him having like flashes of memory that he doesn't understand and it was referring to like moments of the of the old film right. but he definitely doesn't remember those <clears throat> what if he's just pretending not to remember so he doesn't get his memory erased <laughs> I well, already think he's capable. He's I don't like, think. Oh no! Yeah, they erased my memory. I don't remember anything about uh, um, Padme. <laughs> right. Who? What? They, er Sorry? they erased my memory. Uh, Duke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. That, that again. That he definitely says he doesn't know what princess he's talking about, even though he literally talks about the princess in his like first or second line of the film. Right. So, well, that that's that's you know security. That's yeah. security reasons. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, there you go. Good. That's classified. But that's what I'm saying. He's a good actor. He's good at he's good at bluffing people. Right. Mm. So he would, yeah. There you go. He would pretend to have have had his memory erased. Yeah, and also, of course, Lando does earlier in the film talk about erasing L 3s memory, which adds to the weirdness of this <clears throat> whole right. Like it could thing. be it could be that they're sniping at each other for fun. It, so you think when he, he threatens her, her when he threatens her yeah. with having her mind erased, you think that's just like. Well, they needed it for the exposition of <laughs> banter, and I, I think she was out of earshot. But they needed oh, to say like, "Oh well, she's got the best navigational database." They needed to set yeah. that up. What I should do is tear that part of her brain out and just put it in the ship and throw <laughs> her body away. <laughs> it would be useful. Um, I mean, are there any other droids that feel like really individual? Um, Chopper. <clears throat> oh yeah, Chopper's a good one. Although again, he's like, he's like real makeshift, right? Like he's supposedly like bits and pieces of this and that oh is that true well i think that's why because he doesn't match right like his, his his limbs don't quite match and i don't right. know i, I could be mistaken. Mm, well the, uh, there's the it gets kind of i'm i feel like it's fuzzier when you get into cases like um ig88 or for yeah, love of money Zuckus? yeah like <laughs> like are these does does is ig88 owned I, by someone Lam. i mean Zuckus. i'm a I, Pizza. I'm an originalist. Oh, he's a right, Kenner right. fundamentalist. Say, yes, okay, I remember. <laughs> so do do dro do like draw are all droids owned by someone? One person or, owns all the droids. <laughs> the <laughs> well, king again, of the droids or queen. It's um, a great question, and I don't 100 percent know the answer. And especially, I mean, we, we I think we talked about this many seasons ago that like the ownership of the droids in the in the saga is like very mysterious. Like most of the time when they change hands, it's very unofficial and the only time they officially are given from one person to the other they give them to Jabba and then the whole time they're sitting there going I don't we don't want this yeah <laughs> I, I don't want to be working for Jabba and it's like well he's your official owner like they actually no. gave you as a present so too yeah. bad right. although they were purchased <laughs> what do you mean Uncle Owen bought them right so that the but he bought them illegally some... well he bought yeah. them from sure, he doesn't yes. know where they came from but he bought them from you know assuming the Jabba's have some kind of you know, retail license to operate on Tatooine. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Possession of Where? stolen goods. He's guilty. He should be executed. Mm. Oh man! <laughs> well, they probably <laughs> have like a law. They must have like a finder's <laughs> keepers law or like a salvage law in Tatooine. Because if you're out there well, in well, the well, desert, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're absolutely right. There, I'm sure there are salvage laws. Except, again, they're droids. They are That's literally true. sitting there going, "I belong to someone." <laughs> Right. So Not to they say, have their memory erased, they don't. <laughs> like if if the Millennium Falcon crash landed, would they able would they be able to take Chewbacca <laughs> and be like, oh, I found him, salvage law. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like 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 they put restraining bolts on them, but they are literally going, no, no, I have an owner. He's over that way. I have a map that shows me where his house is. His right. name is Obi Wan Kenobi. That's where I'm headed. It is kind of funny because you'd think the Jawas would, that would be like the first thing they would do is as White soon as they race. got a droid, they would just, like if you got a, you know, it seems like that would be the first thing they would do is, is wipe memories. But yeah, that's it, extra just, work. Yeah. It's extra. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they haven't been able to afford the, uh, the memory wipe. So, but, but that was, that's what makes me think that they don't get in trouble for selling stolen goods because otherwise they would erase the droid's memory. But if they're not going to get in trouble, then why would they yeah. bother? No, well, I what? guess it's a pretty lawless it, area, right? Why it's not a hot let, place. Yeah, you, you know, pay off Jabba, then you're copy out Emptor. Let them, you know, if you want to go get the droid's memory, you want to go all the way to Anchorhead to get a droid's memory erased, you do that. Fine, we're not going to do it for you. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, or that other gang, the the Nikto gang. Remember them? Right. Yeah, yeah. they didn't do it. Innocent. Innocent. <clears throat> um. Uh. <laughs> 
So I think that might be all stuff. I have for this minute. What? Well, yeah. I know without getting too um you know, we want to keep the show family friendly as possible, but the this whole time that we were talking about different droids, the personalities, and then talking about Lando's relationship with L3 made me think if there's other droids that are droids that end up being in relationships whether they want it or not with people well we didn't i don't know that we saw that but we, i do remember in uh the prequels us talking about the sexy lady robots that they have in the prequels right, that uh, are like wait why do they have sexy lady robots like that's in dc14 no i think, you know, I think you know the answer to that one <laughs> like in the um we see them yeah, we see them like walking when, around at the Senate and stuff. When the um, when the when the they've crashed the big ship in Revenge of the Sith, they crash the big ship and they go mm -hmm. and they meet all the Imperial dig all the Republic yes. dignitaries, right. and that's when Padme and Anakin have their reunion. Oh, I'm pregnant right, and stuff. Right. But there's a bunch of like almost like Art Deco, almost like a Metropolis, Metropolis lady style lady. like lady right. robots there. And um, I mean, we also saw. I think didn't we see a like. A uh, kind of shapely lady robot also in Maz's castle. Wasn't there like a kind of... Oh, yeah. I thought there was a lady robot in that one, too. Right, right. She Isn't she the one who alerts the uh, rebellion, I think? That the... I mean, keeping it family friendly, related? we have to accept the that fact the that at some there. point, someone had to have invented a robot specifically designed to be compatible with organic creatures in a <sighs> romantic sense. Well, I, I, I'm not even concerned about it. I, I'm worried about... You're worried. I'm worried <laughs> because about like other robots like being Jealous. used that way that are not meant for that. I'm not talking about like like sex bots. I'm talking about like Love I'm like a gonk a gonk droid. Right. I'm talking about like you know like like you know somebody's you know uh, um they, you know they 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 don't have a lot of friends on the farm in Tatooine and but they have robots around and you know. Well, that that absolutely I'm sure because again. It, they're they're programmable right so you can just be like you're this this one is my friend this one right. is my best friend and goes this one's my like special him. friend <laughs> right and i don't know that we've ever seen that uh well i mean again i don't know we don't know what anakin programmed c 3 field to be exactly that's right to help uh, mom <laughs> oh god that's not what i meant but you <laughs> you've never seen know. the trading card <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, who else? I mean, again, you mentioned K two. K two is a is is his constant companion. I don't think that they are in a relationship, but like a right. is it his best friend? Maybe from a certain point of view, except that he's a best friend that he programmed and told. I feel like to he's more me. like like I don't think he's like equal to. No, no, you're right. So he's, he's not, not best friend. I mean, he's a best friend in the sense that dog is a man's best friend. Like he's right. that well, kind so, of best so he, friend, like Chewbacca. He's basically like Chewbacca who can talk, really. Right. So, so better than Chewbacca. <laughs> well, it depends. I don't know, but I like mean, droids don't have like they don't like go home to their family and have a holiday special. Right. Yes, you're right. Although, to in their defense, they regretted that and tried to pretend it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> What they need to do is wipe Chewie's memory so he doesn't care about exactly. the whole family of his. They exactly. just right. he's just. Uh, so I have a um I have a dog. Well, this is actually about my old dog who's no longer alive, but um we um adopted him from someone who was fostering him. You know, basically it was like a house that took in dogs that were gonna be adopted, and so sure. they always just had a rotating cast of dogs in their house. Mm -hmm. And um when we went to go pick him up, the uh the gentleman who lived in the house um was he he clearly had gotten attached to uh the dog's name was uh uh what was he called before the uh, anyway it doesn't I was matter. Gonna say you don't remember your dog's name but he no, no i remember the, the, dog. the dog name was wrigley but his what? name originally was something Leroy. that was it Leroy. Mm -hmm. uh and he was like oh i'm gonna miss you and so on and then we left and then like um uh, maybe like six weeks later we just happened to be we were gonna be driving by and we said hey we're gonna be driving by do you want to see you know Leroy? you want to and they're like oh yeah it'd be great to see you guys and we came there and uh Leroy had no interest in the guy like mm. And complete like any emotional connection with he just totally ignored it went around the house did you know all stuff like that and the guy seemed genuinely like hmm like kind of oh. sad about it so i'm wondering if a chewbacca could be a similar thing where if you just keep him away from kashik long enough he'll eventually just kind of forget about all that all his life at that uh that place. wow mm. 
What do you think? Or opposite think? that if like you know if he just if he'd stayed on a uh, l- little bit longer for Life Day, he would be like Han who? Oh what? yeah, that I oh, could yeah. totally see. That, yeah, especially that, that way because that bald guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it took yeah. him a long time to, to seem to care about Princess Leia in the in that Force right. Awakens. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I totally get now why you had him call Han the bald guy. That's funny. Right. <laughs> it took me a second. I'm like, all oh, right, yeah. To him, he would. Be. <laughs> well, that is all I had for minute seventy. Now that yeah, we're talking I think about so. I, the holiday well, special again. I mean, I'll just uh, say that I I love this movie again. I I am so sad it doesn't have continuations. It didn't have sequels. I hope that they really make the Lando show, and I hope. I hope they bring these folks all back. I mean, not all of them. They can't bring all of them back, but you know, as many of them as possible. All of them. Well, it'll be interesting to see if, if, you know, like we said, the prequels now seem, I feel like the nostalgia train is starting to push the prequels a bit more. I wonder if Solo, you know, in 20 years will be, you know, I guess it's up to your guys, uh, the children to be the standard bearers for the the solo two, uh, although I guess they're they're even too young to be getting nostalgic about solo. Well, so. I mean, I, again, I showed my son all the Star Wars movies way too young, so he <laughs> has already seen Solo and enjoyed. I think it. I think Pete beat you with that one. <laughs> How, what what age did you start at? Um, well, I mean, what, what counts as showing them? Because I think within a couple of days, like I oh. had Star Wars on with okay, well, that you know like count. a baby on me. That doesn't count. But yeah, no, they, no, they all. Um, yeah, we went to go see, I took them to go see Star Wars The Drive-In, oh, I mean, wow. Solo with The Drive-In when that, uh, when it came out. Um, and that was four years ago, so. Yeah, I think they were three and not quite one, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. But, okay, well, not quite one has me been, but I, yeah, Darian and I started watching them at, at two, which is mm-hmm. ridiculous and stupid. Like, I don't recommend that to any parents. No. But. He, Were you mean, pointing out all time. the all the all the flaws? You're like, look, on the you other can hand, see the stormtrooper beat. Him. I do. I say, go do it. Uh, make them as soon have as fun. Made, have them just watch it with them as soon as yeah. possible. I mean, I think I've mentioned this on the podcast. Part part of the reason I did it was because, um, again, when he was born, I was working on Star Wars books. So right. Lucasfilm folks at Lucasfilm sent me stuff, sent me baby stuff and baby books and like baby stuffed animals, and so he's had like a you know, a little Darth plush that he loves for his entire life. And he's been reading kid star Wars books for his entire life. And so it was like, mm-hmm. well, let's show you the, let's show you the real version. Like we start when we, I started by showing him like clips from the movie on his, my phone. And he mm. was blown away that these, these cartoon characters he's been reading books mm-hmm. about like are real. And he's like, Whoa. So yeah, we had fun. We had fun. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I, I feel like it, it's been long enough since he's watched them all that I probably need to watch them again so that he'll like actually remember them. Like we watched all of rebels together. We watched all of the resistance together. Not all of clone wars. Clone wars was too boring for him. Clone wars. He was like, mm. yeah, this is not, not enough action packed for him. You did watch rebels though. We did. We, he got through all of rebels and all of mm. resistance as well. Yeah. We just started rebels, but yeah, they've seen all the movies and they've, they've, I mean, their main thing is the golden books. They've read those a million times. Absolutely. Each, and so where, where <clears throat> feet characters get defeated. Right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. All right, well, well, thank you so much for having me back. It's always a pleasure. It really, really is. Yeah, thanks. And nice we've got, uh, you know, one more movie that we might be calling you up for. So we'll, we'll okay. see. It's, and it's, then, it's who definitely knows? not my favorite of the bunch, but what the future holds <laughs> talk after about that. Yes. Um, I know. I'm surprised because you're a big C-3PO guy and C-3PO is the star of that movie as far as I'm concerned. So we'll, we'll, is, we'll talk about it. I mean, it I is think his they best showing out. of the sequel. I think they chickened out. Mm. <laughs> I think they should have gone through with it as much as I love him. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll table this for a year and yep, see, what, yep. see what we come up with. Yeah. Um, thanks again, Jordan. Thanks to everybody else for listening. Hey, if you are uh, uh, scared to be without us in your ears for for uh, the two days in between now and Monday's episode, why not go to StarWarsMinute.com slash Patreon and sign up for the weekend edition. We do a show on Saturday. We do a show on Sunday. You can, you can listen to us every day and we can be like your morning thing for a while. Over 360 episodes waiting for your ears. Yeah, all that three. That's that purely of weekend stuff. Yeah, well, it's much more than that because then we also that's death just Sunday shows. There's over 360 of those. Yeah, plus that's right. all the the weekend we we went through the certain point of view books one by one. We did that's no Moonraker where we went through the James Bond movies. We did all kinds of stuff over there. If you you like hearing us talk about nonsense? There's plenty of it. StarWarsMinute.com/slash/Patreon. 
So go, support the show, check it out, and we'll meet you back here Monday with a brand new episode of Star Wars Minute. Thank you.